I'll like sit on my chair like this, like I'm kind of on my toes, but my back is braced against the back of the chair. And like something about this sort of like the gravity of this position makes it easier for me to feel like I'm really like attacking the thing that I'm making. That's Kit Mills. He's a professional illustrator and comic artist. And like him, I also do my best work while sitting like a gargoyle. In this episode, Kit and I break down what it actually takes to be a professional illustrator. It can be a delicate balance between uh, whether they wanted you specifically because of some personal spirit that you are bringing to the piece or if they hired you because you um, are a pair of hands who can draw. What does it actually take to be a professional artist? I love that it's basically problem solving with pictures. There, uh, like each project is different and there is a different goal and type of communication involved in each thing that I do. Kit specializes in illustration and full disclosure, Ascend has commissioned him to do some work for us before. Let's throw it up on the screen. So you wake up in the morning, it's time to work. What does your day look like? Like spell it out for me. I focus best if I have done some kind of physical activity before I start working. Um, so I like to go for a little walk around the block or do some yoga or something just to like get my blood flowing and make sure that my brain is functioning properly. Unfortunately, I usually sit on the couch like a little gargoyle and <laughs> like sketch away with my knees up and like <laughs> hunched over um, in probably the worst posture position I uh, allow myself to indulge in. I like to work from like Uh, eight to noon or eight to one and then I take a break in the afternoon because for some reason my brain just like can't focus for a couple hours in the afternoon but then like a magic switch 4 p.m rolls around and then suddenly I'm focused again I can think I'm like ready and raring to go. As a freelancer he's not only doing the illustration work he's also doing all of the project management so yes art has deadlines, workflows, feedback. I'll have an initial interaction with a client where they give me um, a brief on uh, what sort of thing that they're looking for, what the turnaround time is like, what their budget is for the project, and I negotiate around all of those things on what I'm capable of doing, how much I want, after we have our initial agreement and contracts are signed and everything. Um, we, I will do some initial sketches or designs for what I think that the project should look like. And then the client will look at them and be like, I like number two, Uh, or I don't like any of these, please start again. (laughs) Uh, And so then I take that and I do a more worked out sketch type thing. uh, And then we take it incrementally from there. Kit went to Syracuse University and studied illustration there, but kind of an age old question here, Do you need a degree in art to be successful in this field? Uh, Honestly, no, I don't think so. No client has ever asked me if I have a degree where I went to school or what my GPA was. No one cares as long as you can produce good work and you are reliable. That said, I learned a lot from getting a degree, learned a lot about technique and about working and about discipline. Um, So if you have other ways of attaining those things in your life, I don't think that is necessary. Kit said he only ever went to one class about the business side of illustration, and he learned the rest of it just through trial and error in the early days of his career. We didn't really learn very much about what it's like to actually interact with clients, how to get jobs, how to advocate for yourself, how to negotiate. Undersold myself a lot until I figured out um, how unsustainable as a practice that is. I think I should have um, probably tried to, earlier in my career, tried to um, build more of a community for myself out of fellow professional, uh, like, creative workers. Uh, Because when I started, I, uh, like, I had friends who made art, but no one who was really working as an illustrator the way that I was or was trying to. And so I didn't really have anyone to ask for advice on that kind of thing, but I do now, and that is super valuable. How should you go about valuing your work, especially when you're just getting started? And what have you found helpful for you as you've kind of grown throughout your career? 
There is actually a decent formula that you can use in order to figure out how much you should be charging hourly. There's a way to calculate this? The... oh my god. <laughs> I know that there's a stereotype about artists not being good at math, and I, I am sad to say, but I... <laughs> they're right in there. All right, so uh, you think about how much money you would like to make in a year and think about how many hours per week you would like to work or find is a reasonable amount to work. Um, so let's go with 40 and you multiply that by 50 for the number of weeks in the year that you'll probably be working uh, because you should take some time out for sick days and vacations, you know, just be kind to yourself. If you multiply that, that comes to 2,000 hours of working per year. Um, so if you divide your yearly earnings goal, um, so let's say 60K, by that you get about $30 an hour. You should also, 30 is pretty low, honestly. I usually start at at least 50 an hour. But often clients will want to buy the commercial rights to your artwork, which means that they can use it and reproduce it as they see fit. You should charge a lot more for that at least twice. You've brought up kind of this concept of advocating for yourself a few times. Can you talk about, first of all, like what that means in this industry? And second of all, how do you go about actually doing that? Yeah, so it all comes down to self-respect. <laughs> uh, so if you are negotiating with a client and they quote you a rate that is much lower than the figure that you're looking for, um, push back on it. Don't just accept what they're offering you. Uh, I think most people forget that negotiation is and should be a part of all of these contract agreements. How do you go about getting jobs and attracting new clients? I have gotten most of my jobs through networking, um, which uh, networking is less of um, like a, a formal structure than people think of it. Like, I don't really go to networking events and like hobnob with people and be like, oh, I'm an illustrator looking for work. Uh, networking is basically about uh, making friends in your field, uh, like people that you actually genuinely enjoy being around and enjoy having conversations with about your work and about your perspectives as creative workers, uh, and uh, if your friends are working, chances are they are working with clients who have other gigs that they need to give to people, and so if you are friends with people who are working, they will pass the jobs on to you. Kit works for the clients that he takes on, but he's also his own boss. He doesn't go into an office, he doesn't report to anyone, he sets his own hours, which means that it's up to him to stay accountable and to make sure he makes his deadlines. So what's it like to manage yourself? The thing that I immediately thought of when you asked that was remembering to take care of yourself and take care of your body. There's like a culture of procrastination and then crunching when it's time for a deadline uh, to happen and time to get all your stuff in and finish and ready for the client. Um, and I think that kind of cyclical um, procrastination and crunch work style is very harmful. It's easy to forget to take breaks and actually take care of your body. Um, like, I'm in my 30s. I physically can't draw for as long as I could when I was 25. My back hurts, my hand hurts. I have to take breaks and stretch. Um, so if you start doing those now when you're young, uh, that will put some great uh, practices in place for you when you're older and starting to get creaky. <laughs> Art is obviously something that you're very passionate about. Um, how do you avoid that burnout when, you know, your work is your passion, when you are creating and, you know, using your creativity to, as a job, how do you then use your creativity, you know, after hours for yourself and for your, for your passion? Yeah, that's a tough one, and I think about it a lot. Um, I've definitely gotten better at managing that kind of thing in the last couple of years. But I do a lot of um, sketching and making art and then not showing it to anyone, which I think is really helpful for reminding yourself that the creative impulse is for you. Um, and not worrying about what other people think about when they look at your work, just allowing it to be purely about process and about um, 
letting something flow out of your head and whatever is in here out through your hand and then it's done and you don't have to show it to anyone and no one is looking at it and no one is judging it or making any kind of value assessment of it. Thanks for watching. Do you have a career crush? Tell us about them in the comments and we'll see if we can talk to them for you. Subscribe to our channel to see more interviews with people actually living the dream. Bye.